Hello everyone, Tara LaMagna here. I am going to share with you how to maximize your conference investment and how to guide your team in doing the same. Oftentimes we invest a lot of money into traveling to in-person conference. And this year we have the virtual option. Either way, we're investing in this conference opportunity. And oftentimes what happens is we get home and we don't do anything with what we learned. So we are really just wasting our money when we're doing that. And our team members are doing the same. So it's important for us as leaders to guide them in now, what are the next steps after conference? So that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today, and my plan. Um, I'm going to be playing. I'm going to be sharing with you my plan for um, when I return from conference. So the first thing is to schedule a team call or an in-person meeting. So many of us are back to normal in, in wherever we live. We're back to normal for the most part. So an in-person meeting would be great. However, if you can't team call via Zoom would be my next um, my next best bet. And actually that's what I'll be doing with my team since we are all over the US and I don't wanna leave anyone out. So Zoom is always fun because you get to see everybody's faces. And one thing I would recommend is to schedule this call actually before you leave for conference and let everybody know when it's going to be so that they can plan on being there and you'll have a good turnout for that call. And it's also one less thing you have to remember to do when you get back from conference when we're uh, a little bit overwhelmed and overloaded getting back home, right? So on that call, I will have my team members share their top takeaways from conference. Um, this is huge. This is always one of my favorite things to do, what, no matter if it's conference or if it's just a training that I share with my team. Um, hearing what their top takeaways are helps in so many ways. It, first of all, helps people who like totally missed that point in one of the trainings um, and maybe it's a really great one that they could impl implement in their business. So it's great to hear from somebody else um, just as a reminder, but uh, also as a leader lets you know what stands out most for your team members. Maybe that's an area that they need more help in. Maybe um, you want to touch base with them on that and help them set a goal when it comes to that. Um, so I, I love to have them share their top takeaways. And I also will suggest um, that you ask them what they're going to implement first, right? So they've got a lot of top takeaways. They probably have pages and pages of notes, but challenge them to go through and highlight or star um, just a couple things that they're going to implement first in their business to see how they go before they move on to something else that they want to implement. And I really stress with my team that they take one thing at a time versus trying to implement too many things at once for a few reasons. First of all, if they implement too many things um, and they have a great, you know, a, a bunch of success from it, maybe they don't, maybe they won't know where that success is coming from, which change they made led to that success, which is super important. Um, and also they can get very overwhelmed and decide, you know what, I'm not going to implement anything at all because I have too many things I want to implement and I just don't know how to balance it all. Um, so really just focusing with them on identifying those things that they want to implement first and guiding them in how to do that. You know, asking them what areas of your business do you really want to focus on this new fiscal year? And I'm going to get into that um, later on in a couple other slides, but um, what area of your business do you really want to focus on this year? Pick something that you learned at conference uh, that will help you in that goal. And you can actually have them um, think about this and then share it in the team page when they've identified it for some accountability. Also, this is an opportunity for everyone to celebrate the success of the team, of the individuals on the team. It is so hard as a leader, I know you guys all know this, to keep your lips zipped in June as far as, um, you know, um, personal volume totals and team volume totals and all of that, um, recruiting and all of that. It's very difficult <laughs> to keep my, I know it is for me, to keep my lips zipped 
So this is a, an opportunity to really celebrate those successes, especially those you want repeated, right? We always celebrate the things we want repeated. Of course, we want our team to grow. So we want to celebrate recruiting. Of course, we want our team sales to grow. So we want to celebrate those, um, the personal sale, the personal sales, right? And then also all of the promotions, um, you know, the jumpstart earners for the year, all of that. And one tip, by the way, for this as a leader, if you're going to in-person uh, conference, save your uh, program for awards night and refer to that. <laughs> it's a huge help, especially when you have a larger team. And if you do have a larger team, have your leaders help you with this section. They can recognize the people on their core teams, right? And uh, it also gives them some an opportunity to have their face seen, have their team um, see them on your team calls. You look like a cohesive team when you're all taking part in that. So definitely make sure you're celebrating those successes and giving them, giving your team members their uh, time in the light, right? And actually for virtual conference, they won't be able to see the awards. So this is even better. And if you're doing it via Zoom or in person, um, either way, definitely have your awards, any awards that you earned or your team members earned, have them bring them to the call because how fun is it for you to be able to show your awards, for your team members to be able to show your awards, and especially any team awards you get, this is a perfect opportun opportunity to share those um, and to, you know, usually we get home from conference, we put them on a shelf, and that's the end of the story, right? They just kind of sit on the shelf. So this is a great opportunity for your team members to, especially if it's an in-person event, hold those awards, have them feel it, touch it, and believe that maybe someday they'll be able to achieve the same. It, it's very powerful. Uh, the next one, review new products in the wow factors. Now, this actually is a really big agenda. And depending on how many new products we get, this may be something that you want to do in a separate call, um, which is totally fine. But definitely going over the new products and sharing the wow factors. I feel like so oftentimes um, consultants, especially newer consultants, just hit the ground running and just share graphics and share the link for their website and that's it. But it's important to remind your team that we are educators and we are sharing what these products can do for us, what product, what problems these products can solve, right? And focusing on those and sharing how to sell these new products with their customers. And then the last one, sharing tips on filling their August calendar. We know as leaders how to do this. Of course, it's a new product launch. Who doesn't want to host a party in August once they, um, you know, hear about the new products? Everybody's going to want to host. So just sharing with them how to go about reaching out versus, um, you know, posting on their Facebook timeline, who wants to host and things like that, but personally reaching out, what to say, how to say it, um, and how to get that calendar booked. You could also issue a booking blitz uh, to go with this. All right. Another thing that I do separate from the meeting is I demo how to mail catalogs. No matter how many launches I have ever done, no matter how many recordings I have of how to do this, I still end up doing it again every single launch because it's such a simple thing, but so many people struggle with it. So I show them what I use to mail a hard copy catalog. You know, I get the um, cellophane bags from my girlfriend's house, house super cheap. Uh, it's mygirlfriendshouse.com. Super cheap. I'm sure you can get them on Amazon too. Um, but I literally show them how I put my labels on. I show them um, the cellophane, ba cellophane bags that I put them in. I show them how I print my labels for those and um, send them out. And I also give them the tip of including some sort of coupon in the pages of the catalog, something like, you know, $5 off your August order of $40 or more or something like that. Um, just sharing that tip with them. I always share that. And then I also share um, the whatever I'm using that year, um, the 
document that I print out that, you know, has little coupons on it or whatever it may be. So definitely sharing that via Facebook Live or a recorded video. Um, and then also reminding them that we have an online catalog. So those consultants who are newer or don't want to spend the money to mail a hard copy catalog, of course, I always share the benefits of sharing a hard copy, you know, the chances that that will return um, a, a an order is, is huge, right? You're going to get an order likely if you send someone a hard copy catalog and also training them how to follow up with that. Um, but the online catalog option is great for those people who um, don't like a hard copy catalog or those people who, the consultants who don't have the money to be mailing hard copies to everyone, right? So I always share with them that I put a post in my VIP group asking my customers, do they want a hard copy of the catalog snail mailed to them or would they like to save a tree and get an online catalog link message to them? So they always respond. Actually, last time I think I got more um, hard copy catalog requests and the time before that um, I got more online catalog requests. So it really varies, but just sharing with them how to get the catalog into their customers' hands, whether it's online or a hard copy, and then how to follow up once they've done that and how to get orders um, from those catalogs, right? We know that... Of course, we can just send them and chances are they're going to order, but the odds of them ordering greatly increases when we do that follow up, right? When we ask them, have you got the catalog? Um, do you have any questions about the products? And ask them if they'd like to order anything. Um, so definitely going through that whole process with the team because it's been a little bit, it's been a few months since we had a launch and they might have forgotten. And we also have a lot of new consultants. All right, and the last thing that I touch on after conference with my team, and again, this is separate from that call, is creating goals for the new fiscal year. So um, now that they have been to conference or you know they've been to the Zoom call that you did with your team or the in-person event and they've heard about all the awards that they can get and um, you know the promise of the new fall products is exciting. Like the, the sales that we're going to get from that are like, it's always su such an exciting time. Um, and it's the perfect time to set new goals and help your team to do that. It's not only time for you to help them to them set their personal goals. It's also a very, it, it's the perfect time to set uh, your team goals for the year. So I don't know about you guys. Let me know if you set team goals each year and share them with your team. I always like to not only set team goals for the year, but I also do it each month and I share those monthly goals with my team. Um, and I, and I share the fiscal year goals with my team. And the reason that I do that is because it's a team effort. I don't do that on my own. I need their help. And if they don't know what the goal is, then they're not going to, <laughs> they're not going to really strive to hit something that they, they don't even know exists. Right. So definitely sharing your goals for the team. Um, and then also throughout the year, updating them on where they're at in those goals, where your team is at with, those goals, you know, and um, you can even share some stats from last year. Here's what we did in sales for last year. This is my goal for this year. Here's how many new consultants we welcomed last fiscal year, you know, that kind of thing, like comparing to last last year to your goals for this year um, and letting them know that you're going to keep them updated, maybe quarterly on those um, and breaking those goals down for, you know, by month. And you can even use the team goals to model how you want them to set their goals and then break those goals down by month. So, okay, you want to do $50,000 in sales this year. What does that look like each month? What are you going to have to do um, each week? How many parties is that? You know, really breaking it down, painting the picture and helping them to crush this new fiscal year. The other thing that I talk about when I, when I, you know, when we talk it, bleh, when we talk about goals is accountability partners. Accountability partners are huge, especially as your team grows 
larger and larger. I know um, I have struggled with this in the past and likely you're str you struggle with it or have struggled with it before. It's very difficult as a leader once your team gets very large to be able to check in with every single person and make sure that, you know, they're reaching for some goals, right? So accountability partners is a way for you as a leader to make sure that everybody has someone that they can go to that is going to push them and hold them accountable to whatever goals they set for the year. So you can absolutely do this just on your core team and have them pick someone else on your core team or you can match them up whatever you want to do. Maybe there's a Google form you want them to fill out. And, you know, one thing that I like to do when I match up accountability partners is ask them what method of contact they prefer, what time zone they're in, you know, things like that so that I can match them up with somebody who is maybe just going to want to text someone once a week. And, um, you know, they're on the, in the same time zone because, it's very difficult <laughs> to find a time that works for someone on the East Coast and the West Coast, right? That works for both. So definitely um, consider doing something like a simple Google form for that. And then um, also even better, uh, you could find, you could um, work with your leaders and match your team members who want accountability partners up with theirs. It's fun to have them um, have accountability partners that are not on their team because they hear from you, but they, uh, and so they know what you train them on. Um, and so when they get an accountability partner that's on someone else's team, they hear new, fresh ideas, right? And they can exchange those. It works really well. And I actually prefer to match partners up from different teams. Um, so yeah, that works really well. And oh, the other thing I was going to say is with accountability partners, the other thing that I do is I uh, suggest that they switch accountability partners. They get a new partner um, like at least every quarter because that way, again, they're getting new, fresh ideas um, and it, it doesn't get boring and uh, boring for them so that, the you know, Sometimes when you have an accountability partner for six months, the same one, uh, you kind of you're like, OK, uh, I you kind of you kind of um, let it go. You know, you stop reaching out to them because it gets a little boring um, just reaching out to the same person all the time. So definitely consider having them switch accountability partners every quarter. And you can even put a note in your phone um, to remind yourself to do that and do this whole process again. Um, and at that point you can schedule another team call and have them check in on their goals, um, share in the team page, you know, where, th what they've achieved so far, how close to the goal are they? Did they have to set a new goal? How's their ac accountability partner working out for them? And um, then set new partners, right? So, these are just some of the things that I do after conference that I think are extremely important as far as really max, like I said at the beginning, maximizing your conference investments and also preparing for the new fiscal year. A lot of consultants don't realize that the lemongrass fiscal year is from July to June. So again, just really reminding them of that and um, taking advantage of that. And, you know, a new year is always exciting for most people. And so this is a great opportunity to really boost the engagement in your team, the excitement, and really prepare for that new year. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. But I'm excited for this launch. And you know, once we go to conference, um, once the products are launched, we may change this a little bit. But this is my plan for now. And if you have any plans for after conference, please share them with the rest of us. We would love to see it because as I said, it is always great to hear new ideas and do a little brainstorming. Thanks for tuning in.